John, thank you so much. Now, if all the panelists uh, make their way uh, towards the uh, podiums here, and we will uh, kick this off on next generation uh, technology. And, uh, you know, a couple things I think came through uh, very uh, strongly there. And one of the things that came through, I think, very strongly was the need for more standardization. Uh, you know, Jan, you mentioned it. Uh, Pete, uh, you also uh, mentioned it in your uh, comments. And I'm wondering if you could elaborate on that uh, further. You know, you talked about the need for uh, integrated uh, information. Yeah. I, I'd, I'd put a little bit of a caveat on that. What, what I call for are common standards. And I think standards versus standardization are a lot different. You know, I, I think as entrepreneurs, as people that are trying to advance technology, we want an opportunity to enhance things. And if everybody does it, standardization connotes doing it the same way. Now, I, I, I grant you, we need standards, and we need to have worldwide standards, but I think then it's left up to everybody else how they want to meet those standards and how they want to overachieve those standards. You want to comment on that? Yeah, I agree. Standardization is good to disseminate technology around the world. But to develop new technology, you need to qualify the new technology. But that process can also be standardized. So they have good processes for considering the safety and environmental issues on new technology where there are no standards today. Okay. Henrik Madsen, let me introduce him from uh, DNV, he's the CEO and president. Uh, we also have Lars Peter Solsad, the CEO of Solsad Offshore. Uh, we also have uh, Jan Eric. Uh, Ryan Hartson, he's the president and CEO of PGS, and uh, Roy Wrighty, the CEO and executive director of STXOSV. Uh, Do you want to pick up on that because you want to make a comment? Yeah, yeah I, I fully agree with, with Peter. In, in fact, you know, standard products could be prohibitive from improving safety because we are continuing to invest in technology and new products to improve safety. But, but at the same time, standardizing processes on how to assess uh, safe behavior, safe products, make, may make a lot of sense, as Henrik alluded to. Right. Mm. Yes, uh, I fully agree that we, we need uh, strict standards. But, you know, the industry also now facing a, uh, a period where you're picking up again, and we see new people coming into the industry. And we need to map these with experienced people to understand mm. the risk and also to develop the new technology that mm. will reduce the risk. Mm. We, need to, we need to use our experienced people to, to, uh, to do this. Yeah. I think it's important not to make this a, a conflict of either or. I think mm. we need to improve standards, but we need to standardize okay. where that is commercially and operationally feasible. And our industry, if we are honest, have had the tendency of tailor-making too much. Mm. But, but I think what you're suggesting here, Pete, and Lars, I just want to get your comments real quickly on this. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I mean, I agree with the others. So nothing yeah. more to add. You know, because I think one of the things you were suggesting in a situation, it doesn't matter, uh, let's say, who the, the oil company is, you need to be able to go to them and everyone has to be speaking the same language here. Uh, absolutely. I mean, I think when you take a look at, again, standards, I, I, think, I think we need. You know, things have to be able to do a certain amount of things. How you achieve those standards, though, mm. becomes something much, much different. You know, I think if you take a look at a blowout preventer, and the standards are that you have to be able to uh, cut and seal a tool joint within uh, 20 seconds, as an example. Well, that's great. That's a great standard. How you achieve that standard is something different. Now, I want to make something very clear. You make BOPs, but you are not involved in the Macondo accident. I can say that 30 times, but I think people <laughs> understand that, okay? I, I, I appreciate the comment. Okay. <laughs> but, but, but what I do want to ask you, because there's such a focus on this, is... Uh, what are you doing in the aftermath of the uh, Macondo incident in terms of looking at your technology for BOP? And are you collaborating? Because this is one of the points that was brought up by our good friend from Statoil, the need for collaboration. Yeah. I, I, I think the, the first part of the answer is we're doing a lot. But I will also tell you this. We did a lot pre-Macondo. I mean, I mean, Macondo, while it spurred on certain things, the industry was certainly moving ahead in things like shear rams, pressure-assisted uh, tanks, different things like that. So the industry was doing a lot of that. And I think as we learn things, absolutely we have to share it. You know, I think you obviously have a little bit of a, a, a patent issue, but this industry is very good about sharing, uh, licensing, doing all sorts of things. And I think historically we have taken a lot of that technology and we've shared it with each other. 